the book of Revelation, 12th chapter beginning at the first verse. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his, his tail drew down the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto the Most High, into his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had the place prepared of the Most High, that they should feed her a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought with his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the power of our sovereign and the power of his messiah for the accuser of the brethren is cast down which accused them before the most high day and night and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto death therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of the Most High and have the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. Peace be unto you brothers and sisters. Peace be unto you. This is Elder Youngman and the name of tonight's message is Resolved. Resolved. thankful to the Most High for the privilege to speak to you tonight. I thank him because it's a privilege to stand and speak his word. I have a new appreciation for that honor and that the Father's word is imparted and it's, it's, it's open for just a few people those that would follow the Father and those that would be willing to, to sacrifice for Him. But what I'm given tonight um, is a bit of an urgent matter because our time is short and the world is changing by the minute, by the day, uh, by the second. This world is changing into the place that's described by this book of scripture. 
and though many of you don't really believe that the book is literal and don't really appreciate that it's a living word I mean I'm not gonna doubt that um, you understand its importance but the call of the commandments um, the pressing nature of being in compliance with the father's word and his laws um, that part has escaped this generation and people are simply they just you know they just don't consider um, what's happened in the scriptures they don't consider uh, the magnitude of the plagues they don't understand the magnitude of the flood they don't they they don't really know our father and they don't really understand um, or have a proper amount of fear of being uh, found in the hands of an angry creator this generation just does not understand that and it's because of that it's because of the spirit that was on the church of Laodicea that the lukewarmness that um, that people are just able somehow to block out what's going on right in front of their faces and you, you have to understand that this is all ordained and really created by the father because the point or the um, the thrust of it is to to test those people to test those that will give up the things of the world and which ones will be forced to give up the things of the world um, that's really the only reason that we're allowed a choice at this point but what I've come to tell you tonight and you know others have told you this and you know I've told you this on you know on a number of occasions that that choice is about to be taken away that um, that option to to be outside of the father's will and still go home to a warm house um, those things are about to go away the option to be outside of the father's will and go and fill your belly and you know be satisfied with food and um, have electricity and warmth and all of those things these things are about to go away and I know this because the scriptures say that so the choice that that many of us are going to be faced with very soon is going to be what are you willing to do what are you willing to sacrifice spiritually to continue on in that way of life even if that way of life doesn't exist anymore even if the closest thing that you can come to that life is a FEMA camp or living in somebody's shed and doing work um, what are you ready to do we're living in a world where the laws are changing every day um, one example of that would be with the injections there was a news report that was on today about how um, the GOP now is in a hot debate about whether or not injection should be mandatory now years ago you know this wouldn't even be a debate it would just be a choice it would just be um, an item that you know either you decided to do it or you didn't but now at the end we already know that you know these injections are harmful as they are now but they're about to put put out new injections for things like Ebola like measles um, and the 
the pharmaceutical companies have asked for immunity <laughs> so that they're not responsible for what these things do. That's just one example. Um, holding to the scriptures, uh, holding to the law, holding to a moral code where uh, you stand on the scriptures, you, you know, homosexuality is wrong and you'll say it or you'll stand on that. Um, these are becoming less and less desirable in this society. These things are becoming more and more taboo. Um, if there is a place for scriptural things, it's always done in the context of religion. And the way that it, the way that this place is set up is that anti-scripture is just as much religion as scripture. So you know you've got a situation now where um, if you do what the book says and you separate yourself from those folks that you know are not in the will of the Father, and you know you don't go and you do the you don't do the holiday parties and you don't do the pagan celebrations that are standard in the country see it's becoming more and more a situation where you stand out if you hold to this book it's becoming more and more a situation where um, you know if you have a moral code and you, you have um, a spirit in you that wants to do the right things you know whether that's by your children whether that's by uh, your practices in business whether that's um, just simply trying to do what the scriptures say and come out from among her and make yourself separate it's coming down to a point where people look at that and they frown upon it they you know, if they don't understand it or if they don't agree with it, they want to take you in front of some sort of a, a governing body and they want your morals questioned. They want to be able to haul you off into court. Um, and really, the government is setting itself up in a way that that's easy. That can be done with an 800 call. You can pick up the phone and just tell, you know, and call somebody and say, um, this looks suspicious to me. And that person's life will be touched by that suspicion. They'll have to explain themselves at the very least to somebody uh, that probably doesn't have the same moral code that they have. That might just be having a bad day. That might just not like the color of their skin or the sound of their voice. And that's the place that that is what this place is turning into. And what is important for any one of us that's running back to the father, trying to get back to the father, what's, what's the most important thing for us to know at this point is that we have to be resolved. We have to have this thing made up in our minds already. We have to know what we're going to say when the people come to the door and they want to check to see if you've been injected. They, When they come to the door and, and, they, and they want to drag you in the street and tell you that your, your children have to fight in the war, you, there has to be um, a conversation that's had within your house. There has to be a conversation that, that's had within you. You have to be resolved to know beforehand what it's going to be when these things are in front of you. Because what the law is beginning to tell us, what the news is beginning to tell us, what this fake debate in Congress is telling us is that we will be presented with these choices now revelation 18 4 calls for us to come out from among her um, that is so much more than just changing your address that 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 
that's just it, it's it's a lifestyle and it's a it's a mind state and it's a resolution that what mystery babylon becomes you will not become but a refusal to leave the cities a refusal or an inability to live the, leave the cities is basically a setup so that you will definitely be presented with these choices this is going to happen first in the cities it's going to be heaviest in the cities and what you're going to see mark my words what you're going to see is the churches will fall in line with whatever the government is talking about because they're a part of the government the scriptures describes um, the mountains and the hills the hills of the religious institutions this is where you go to get your moral code if you if you remember probably about a year ago uh, one of the pastors of the largest uh, Protestant churches here in the country John MacArthur and there was a big uproar about it told his congregation and all of those that listen to him that the mark of the beast was okay to take uh, in the black church Creflo Dollar got up in front of his people and told them now listen to this that the only way not to condemn yourself to sin is to not associate yourself with the law in any way not even the Ten Commandments and that's that's just the extreme stuff what goes on in the churches today is a conditioning process where they normalize sin they teach us or you they teach you not to have any fear of the most high at all and if you go into the apocryphal scriptures one of the first things that you read in the books of wisdom is that wisdom the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the most high in the canon first john 5 3 tells us that the love of the most high is that we do his commandments so the world now is preparing the people is preparing them to accept whatever it is that the bankers want to do uh, their government officials that they bought out what they want to do um, the police what they want to do the mountains the hills are preparing to deliver the people up to the mountains and for us for any of us to make it through this first of all we have to know what's in this book we have to understand that the commandments were never abolished they never would be they're the word of the most high the the word of the most high changes not it never changes the law was put into place it was an administrative body to keep people from breaking the commandments that's what the law was so the law the reason for the law was never abolished and I'll give you some New Testament scripture on that first at first John 5 3 where the love of the Most High is keeping his commandments and all throughout Revelation those that will make it into the kingdom are those that keep the law that keep the commandments but this world and these laws that are being passed um, what's considered different what's considered um, archaic and what's considered undesirable seems to really be taking its shape around believing this book So for us, again, for us, 
we have to be resolved ahead of time we have to have it prepared in our mind that when this thing happens either we're going to be out of the way or we understand that we're not going to side with guarding the flesh and keeping ourselves here in this world is it that heavy we're at the end of the age and our Messiah is about to split the sky and you got to understand when the 12th chapter of Revelation says that um, the great serpent knew that his time was short he knew in heavenly time that our Messiah has only been gone two days he knew he didn't have much time to corrupt uh, the children of the Most High he knew that his time was short and that he had to come at them and to destroy them to take away their memory of who they were and to make them hate their own image and to make them love the sin so much that they allow to themselves to continue on in it because if wisdom doesn't dwell in a body that's full of sin and he can fill us all up with sin then we're defeated he doesn't have to worry about uh, any anyone keeping the law so that they can be with the Messiah so that they can uh, return home or that they can preach against his kingdom now what does it mean what does it look like to be resolved? What, what shows up? And that's covered in the book. The eleventh verse in the in the eleventh verse in the twelfth chapter says it. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. That's already done. Our Messiah came. He was our example. He showed us. He showed us what it was to stand up to uh, people that betrayed you. He showed us what it was to stand against an empire and simply not to change, not to go back, not to not to do what was easy. He stood up against Satan and turn down the entire world. So the blood of the lamb is done. And by the word of their testimony, that means that those of us with testimony, those of us that have walked through things, those of us that have matched those things and you know uh, found the scriptures on what it was that happened in our lives, we had to speak. We have to let people know that they aren't the only ones that are going through this stuff. They are not the only ones that, um, you know, people are coming in and trying to take their kids, trying to lock them up for doing the right things, doing the things that they've been called to do. But what resolve looks like is that they love not their lives unto death. My brother, preacher, brother Yaya Bondale, one of the things that he would say is that the difference between a free man and a slave is simply that the free man is not scared to die. There's nothing that this world has that can be taken from him that will cause him to live as a slave, that will cause him to relinquish um, the power of our father. He simply will not conform. He will not be um, a lukewarm person. He won't be a Laodicean. And this is what it took to cast Satan out of heaven to to win the war against him in the heavens and Michael and the angels did that 
So now the devil is here and our Messiah is on his way back. And those that will be with the Messiah are those that will not live as a slave in Satan's world. Because you got to understand that what Satan fears is that when Yahshua gets here, he'll find faith in the earth and that the remnant will preach and there will be a first reaping and then there will be a second reaping after the preaching of the remnant. Revelation chapter 11. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of the Most High and the altar and them that worship therein. See, we're the temple. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. That's Jerusalem. That's where all the um, that's where all the armies are going. That's where all of the military equipment is going. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. See, this is what he's trying to stop. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the Most High of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. You see, when we're in the will of the Father, when we've submitted to him and we've returned to him and we come back to our responsibility, based upon what the scriptures say, um, these people can't touch us. But you have to be resolved and you have to believe it. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over water to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which is spiritually, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where our Messiah was crucified. And their bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which is spiritually as called Sodom in Egypt, where our Messiah was crucified. So that's the end. That's the fourth kingdom. That's Mystery Babylon. That's the United States. That's where we live now. So the question becomes, if this is intended to be you, are you resolved to follow what this book says? Are you ready or willing? Do you have the spirit to stand and to preach while these folks are trying to lock you up in jail? Are you ready to leave everything? Ultimately, are you ready to be killed? That's the question. In this world, with these killer cops, with these killer thugs, with the Congress passing all this legislation, with the president not standing on an ounce of scripture, with the European leaders um, purchasing with purchasing water cannons to put down protests, and with people. Uh, running off to the protests uh, with the fact that in New York City right now they put together a police force that deals with terrorism 
and protesters in the same manner, toting around machine guns. You have to understand and open your eyes and realize that this place is not a place where you're going to find peace. And the question that remains is, are you going to try to make peace with this world? Are you going to try to love this place and continue on with it regardless of what it becomes? Are you resolved? Have you made it up in your mind like the Messiah that whatever Satan does, you're not going to follow him? Have you made it up in your mind that whatever persecution comes, you're not going to go with the world? This is the choice that's coming. This is what's going to be knocking on your doors. This is what's going to be hunting you down. And my question to you is, are you resolved? Abba Father, we thank you this day. We thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you, Father, for preachers that have come, that you've placed your spirit into. And we thank you, Father, for your spirit so that some of us could hear and could apply. Father, I ask that all of those that have a heart to receive, that they be moved so that, Father, they may not find themselves under the boot of what's coming, that their eyes can be opened and that the spirit of sleep is removed so that they can move, so that they can make preparations for their family and for themselves so that they can come out and fulfill Revelation 18 4 because it's a spirit father it's not anything that any person can do on their own give them the eyes to see that father these things we ask in the name of the risen Messiah in the name of Yeshua Hamashim is my name we pray hallelujah 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 let it be let it be let it be that's the message Pray on what you've heard. Pray for a spirit that's resolved. And that's at peace with the Father's will for what this world will become. Shalom. Elder up.